you know, just want to get your view here on how this is going to change the game, if at all, for the uh, uh, Indian bond market. I know you're M&A, but uh, generally speaking, what does it mean? Look, I think uh, the outlook for overall uh, M&A market is I'm cautiously optimistic about because the drivers uh, in terms of what companies are looking for in the market is valuing continues to be profitable growth. And when you have global economic slowdown, it's important to find pockets of growth. And India offers exactly such a pocket for growth which one of the highest GDP growth levels, as well as offering a potential solution to one of the key things that various companies are focused on. You talked about oil, but it's much broader than that. It's finding a diversification for supply chain, it's digitization, it's tech enablement, and being able to invest in those tech capabilities that is driving companies the world over. And when you look at that, India offers a very good target market to provide exactly those gaps that companies are trying to fix through M&A. Uh, so, I don't, so, you know, those are the things, you know, I can be a bit more specific, I think, you know, in the three themes that you, you, you're highlighting uh, with regards to how they play out in the M&A and indeed the initial public offering market. Yeah, so I think when you look at companies the world over, you're looking at almost every part of the world where organic growth that is available to you is pretty limited. However, the investors are giving a premium for profitable growth. So where do you go to find that and how do you do that without using M&A becomes hard. And then when you look at how do you prioritize the different parts of growth, you're looking for supply chain diversification as well as tech enablement. And our own practice in India has been a mix of both strategic as well as financial sponsors. We talk about sponsors having about two trillion of dry powder globally. And there's about 100, 150 billion that is now focused on India across infrastructure as well as other sectors, primarily tech and healthcare. And so as we look at the combination of the inflows into the Indian market, as well as the exits that financial sponsors have successfully been able to do, that bodes well for more money getting deployed in India, as well as more monetizations that you see coming out of India. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, with interest rates globally on the rise and where they are right now, how does it, you know, this lead to uh, funding and financing of some of these deals? Uh, you know, it must be surely getting more expensive. And uh, as a result, what uh, are you witnessing? You're absolutely right, because the interest rate cost makes the same acquisition that you're going to do today more expensive. The availability of capital is there, but it is certainly more expensive. But on the other hand, Valuations have also normalized in most parts of the market. And in this market, deal doing requires more nuance, more creativity, more negotiation, and more structuring. So a cookie cutter approach to deals becomes more challenging. And there is a lot more negotiated, structured deals that is happening bilaterally between two counterparties.